Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. It sure went fast, didn't it, this weekend? Uh, I got a few things to do today. I don't know where this episode's going. I got a, a dental appointment later on today and a follow-up. And uh, it went very well with the dentist. Uh, thanks for asking for those that did. Uh, it was a new dentist. That's why I had so much anxiety. But uh, this guy is... Uh, is very good and uh, so I, I'm not as anxious uh, this time um, first up what I want to do is uh, I have a good friend Alex Schoenberg good guy he's been a, a friend of the show for years and it's just a great guy all around you probably know him if you watch Ben's channel the tool addict he's always uh, uh, Alex is always finding all kinds of uh, interesting Baco tools to send to Ben and um, Alex is having a birthday, celebrating a birthday this week, so I want to wish him a happy birthday. But he mentioned to me, he said, you know, I have to tell you, uh, time is starting to go a little bit too fast. He's a little concerned at how fast time is going. And <laughs> I guess we've all hit that point at one time or another, right? Um, if you think time goes fast in your 20s, and your third, it, it kind of becomes a blur after a while. It goes so fast, you know? And... I never thought I could, would say this, but, you know, the last few years, especially now since I've been retired, time has just been going so fast. The weeks go so fast. So many times I'm like, man, garbage goes out. I, I, I didn't even know garbage goes out today. You, you lose track of time, but it's, it's, but that's a good thing because when time goes fast, it means you're having a good time. There's nothing worse. Think about all the times in your life that time dragged by jury duty or you know, you're waiting online and, and you, or things like this and you say, oh, geez, this is never ending, you know, and that's when you're miserable. But when, when you're having a good day or you ever have one of those perfect days that just go by so fast, you say, wow, that was so fast. Or a good vacation, you know, a good vacation, a couple days, you say, wow, that was so, uh, it was so fast, this vacation. Or the weekends, it's because you're having a good time and that's a good thing. So, you know, uh, don't dread the fact that time's going fast. Dread if things drag. Because maybe one day we might be in a nursing home looking out a window, just, you know, one day just leading into another and saying, time's not going fast enough. So appreciate it while you can. This is the good times. Believe it or not, this is the good times. Okay, with that, uh, we got a few things to talk about today. A show and tell. Everybody loves a good show and tell. Let's get started right now. Okay, first up, uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, giving the input in on these bulbs last week. Remember, we did this lamp build last week. A lot of people, it was between this bulb here, because it looked so much like a real flame, and the flickering bulb. But, it, you know, there was so many different, there was almost equal votes for everyone except for the chandelier bulb, the LED one at the end. Nobody voted for number five, but... Uh, I do appreciate it. Well, you know, it's nice to have different bulbs, but I wish you could see it in person because it looks a little bit different than it does when you see it on, on camera. But thanks for your input. And uh, that's the fun of this. And I was thinking I could even take a bulb and paint it with that clear orange, the Tamaya clear orange. So I have more options and I'm going to work on that. But we'll do we'll do more of these. Now, here's something I think you might find pretty interesting. Um, when I was making that uh, that torch lamp, I you know I, I come across these cords whenever I see a decent appliance thrown out on my walks. I always carry a pair of channel locks and I'll cut off the cord and I'll take it home and I'll throw it in a bin. You know, you never know when you. I make all kinds of projects and it's uh, it's it's a free cord, right? So when I was uh, about, I was going to use this for the lamp and I checked it and what I did was because I have to find out which one of these. This is the neutral. This is the hot, and I want to see which one of these is neutral neutral and hot. So I take my volt ohmmeter, set it up where it beeps, and then I touch the one line here. And you could see this line here is the neutral. Okay. Now the other one should be hot. So I went to touch the hot, nothing. So I said, well, maybe the cord's bad. But upon further inspection, this is a cord, a decent one, because it's fused. And you can see here, you see that? that the fuse there it's a 2.5 amp fuse and i didn't even know that uh, i never had one of these before so check it out this is how it works what you do is you pop open this little uh pull you just pull this off here and you can see this here is an extra fuse they give you see there's an extra one and here's your fuse in here 
You see? So to access the fuse, you take your little screwdriver uh, and you place it in here and you slide this door upward. And when you slide it up, it just takes a second here. There you go. You slide it up like we just did. And there's the fuse. Now I, I tested the fuse here by taking the probes, putting it on one end here and then on the other end. And I have nothing. You see nothing so that fuse was blown and you know if I didn't look further I never would have known this. isn't that interesting so, so you can get a fused plug if you look around which is a nice thing to have 2.5 amp fused now plug. to remove remove these fuses it's a little tricky you need a small flat bladed screwdriver like a jeweler screwdriver you place it under and you just pry it up okay and then when you pry it up like this you take a uh, needle nose pliers or if you have a strong enough finger but I'll take a needle nose pliers and just pull that then fuse you're out. just going to replace it with the new one by snapping that new fuse in there closing the door like that and then replacing the fuse holder this is a good time to look for another fuse to buy another fuse because you know it is nice that they give you a spare because I never would have expected that right and there we go we're back in business and last up just double check that make sure that your wires are c connected by touching here you hear the beep touching here we hear the beep and then going across and you could see that there's no cross so there we go it's always a good idea to check it and that's interesting a fused plug which i haven't seen this type before now to find these 2.5 amp fuses and uh, stock up on them now the shame of it is that whatever i cut that cord off of probably was fine or something and maybe just a fuse blew there might have been a surge or something my father used to find all kinds of stuff that was simple fixes you know vacuum cleaners that needed a belt like the, this appliance might have been a fan just needed to replace that fuse you know so you know it's always good to check like that because you can come across some real gold thrown out in the poor man's flea market Okay, let's get going with what we have next. Okay, next up, you remember a couple weeks ago, Scott sent me that great phone. Well, I had one. Now, I'm not a collector of phones, but I, I must have about four or five. And this was one that uh, I want to show you about. But it needs a cleaning up. I must have got it just like this. Never cleaned it. Had it in a box. Let me clean it up and just give you a little demo of this cool phone. This is a very popular phone. One of the most popular phones made by the bell system let me uh, clean it up we're going to take some uh some plastic polish uh plastex and uh clean it up get rid of all the stuff okay here's something interesting to take apart the bottom of the phone the casing off the phone there's two screws okay one at uh, 12 o'clock and one at about uh seven o'clock and and you take the screws off here and if you look this is an interesting screw because it's an interrupted thread you see that it threads up it's uh it's bare and then it's threaded again near the very tip so that's a that's a very rare screw I mean, you never see those right and then what happens is this will pull off the whole top casing of the phone will pull off like that exposing the innards of the phone and this is what these phones look like here you could see this is the uh the the, the buttons the clear uh, buttons that would when you wanted to hang up on somebody this was the, the mechanism there that how that worked and uh, you know you could see here the little transformer the bells for and there's the ringer that's what would make the phone ring going back and forth uh, very interesting right it's uh, these things were almost a bulletproof uh, again with the relays the mechanical relay here just a, a marvel of engineering these were a very popular phone and were in thousands and thousands of households in all different colors mine in my house was beige let's finish cleaning hey, this up. here we are all cleaned up what a beautiful phone this is huh this is the model 500 uh, phone this was the most popular phone that weston bell Western Electric uh, used the Bell system, and it was uh, designed in 19 about 1946 to 48 by Henry Dreyfus. Took him a while to design a phone, and he was working in collaboration with the Bell Systems <clears throat> to develop this phone. It was in service from 1950 to about 1984, 85 around there. So it had a really good run. Uh, these were very expensive phones when you went to buy one. In fact, a lot of people don't realize that when you went to pick up a phone like this. 
you would rent it a lot of times from the phone company, but they cost about $179 to buy. And if you wanted the upgrade to the touch tone was like another $70. The phone company used to really rip us off, <laughs> but you know, they employed a lot of people and whatever, but man, that stuff was crazy. And when you think about how, how cheap it is to call now, you can call ac across the world for, for next to nothing. So let me tell you a little bit about the phone. Uh, this one here is a rotary dial. You could get the option for a metal dial. This is a plastic that was the uh, standard one it came with. Now, when you picked up the phone, you had the telltale uh, dial tone, which sounded like this. And then you would start to dial. And if your number was started with the area code 518, 370 and now a lot of the old timers are smiling right now because we can remember we remember the sound and we re remember that feel and how long it would take if you had a phone number that had a lot of eights seven eights and nines you know that that <laughs> would take forever for the thing to return uh, the funny thing is when the touch tones came out, I remember we were kids. It was like so you could dial a number So fast. It was like crazy. It was like wow And I I remember when we upgraded in my house from a dial tone a rotary to a, uh, a Touch tone it was like such a big upgrade. We thought we were the you know, we were the cool kids on the block but this is that phone the 500 and uh, what a lovely phone it is. Now, you can buy these phones. They, they run around $20, you know, and not that anybody... You could still actually use this phone. A lot of a lot of uh, phone companies still support the rotary system. But, again, these were outfaced. I just keep it because it's a part of history. And I think this phone was just a lovely invention, wasn't it? Henry Dreyfus, 1946 to 48, he developed it. Beautiful phone. Now, here's something that a lot of old timers know how to do that young people don't know how to do. Hello? You see that? See, I'm holding the phone. See that natural? <laughs> Every old timer knows how to do it. It was a little tougher on the, the right hand. If you, were, if you were righty, it was hard to do it. But the definite, that crook in the neck and it, the way it locked into your your collarbone <laughs> we all knew how to do it right we all had to do it hands-free the other thing is if you wanted to cover it said, Shh, I'm on the you know you would cover up the receiver and point <laughs> okay next up got a cool show and tell for you when I was a kid we had a barber shop not far from my house and I always had magazines comic books boys life things like that that you could look through while waiting to get your hair cut and there was always these cool advertisements in the back of these magazines. And I remember when I was a kid seeing these moon bounce shoes. And I said, wow, I would have liked them. But I was a little chubby kid <laughs> when I was a kid. And I knew that it wouldn't work for me. I would just compress the springs because I was a little fat kid. But I, later on in life, I picked up a pair just because I always wanted them as a kid. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, what you're looking at here is a pair of vintage 1960s satellite spring jumping shoes. And, uh, you know, you would see these advertisements of these kids putting these on, and it's like walking on the moon. Who wouldn't want to walk on the moon? You know, you can jump for like five feet in the air, and it was just... So that's what you thought of. You said, what a great design. Two big springs, and... You know, unfortunately, they didn't work quite as well as they looked like they would. Uh, I guess if you were re very lightweight and uh, they were marketed for boys and girls between the age of 4 and 14 years old. Uh, let me show you how this one. These were the later model that had the uh, advanced um, anti-twist mechanism. And I'll show you what that means here. First of all, you can see they were sheet metal screw, uh, sole, a sheet metal top here. And uh, they had, I guess, little bumpers on the bottom because you know you would try these indoors and you know, you didn't want to mess up the floors. <laughs> uh, it had two springs, you know. 
uh, not quite super heavy duty, but uh, pretty interesting. And then you had this, this one here is the added feature you don't see on a lot of earlier models. Uh, and what this was, it, it was an anti-twist feature. You see it had like a piano hinge style on uh, over here so that they wouldn't twist when you stepped on them. That was a problem with the earlier models. Not that I would know because I never was able to, to try them out. Because if I did, all I would do is just squeeze them right down to a pancake. But uh, I don't know how much pressure it takes. Not much to squeeze them down. Interesting design. Looks like it'd be a lot of fun. Had the lace up here. Had a adjustable heel with a, a wing nut here that you would uh, adjust the heel length to your shoe and strap it on and uh, go jumping around the neighborhood, you know, boing, boing, boing. <laughs> Look like a lot of fun, huh? Imagine, imagine the things that we grew up with, that, pogo sticks, things like that, all mechanical toys. Interesting, I just think it's interesting. That's why I got them. Okay, that was a fast episode, right? I mean, we got a lot done, but it was a mosh. And uh, uh, I wanna leave you with a little bit of a story. Um, you know, a couple of people asked me how's uh, the critters doing around the house and I have to tell you my mice those little guys always happy never seen such a happy animal in my life you know these guys they just love to run around and and you know as far as what I feed them I don't buy any special mouse food I give them they love Cheerios and uh, they like peanut butter on you know on some Italian bread <laughs> they eat all kinds of salad they love a good salad you put a handful of salad in there, it's gone the next day. So they eat all kinds of stuff, you know, anything that I eat more or less. And, but they are the happiest critters you ever saw. And I, I, I really do love these little guys. Um, as for the cats go, you know, uh, that one cat, I, I, you remember that one, uh, I got this cat, Trixie, and I called it Trixie. My girlfriend named it because it was very tricky. It wouldn't get into the trap. I was, you know, I, I trapped the, the litter, the second litter that the mother had, and I was gonna bring it to have them adopted. I could get everyone except for Trixie. She wouldn't go into the trap. She knew. She was like, I'm not going. And even though she was hungry, she wouldn't go in. So I said, okay, you want to stay here that bad? You could stay here. So um, she, she's she been coming in the house, and she's a, she's a good cat. But the funny thing is she loves, and a lot of my other cats, they love these videos made for cats. And this is a special shout-out to Ben Maul. I know Ben has a cat. And uh, he's enjoying that cat. So, uh, if you have ever seen it, try and introduce your, your cats to these videos, and especially during the winter time or something. They can't go out. You know, we had a blizzard the other day. It was so bad. You know, the cat came in, and uh, I put on this video for the cats. And I'll tell you, you never seen an animal enjoy watching TV as much as I do. And <laughs> she just was just having a ball and purring. What a great, whoever thought about making those videos for cats, uh, kudos to you, because it was a great idea. But uh, anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a, a great week going. This is the beginning of the week, so I hope it goes good for you, and we'll see you again on Wednesday. Take care now. Bye-bye.